Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module six, lesson two. I'm going to start off with the I can objective. It says I can represent the sum of fractions with different size parts using a visual model. And the learning objective says use visual models to add fractions with different sized parts. Prior learning as students compared fractions with different numerators and different denominators by using visual models and by renaming. And students express the relationship between two fractions using inequality or equality statements. All right, so moving on to page 133 in your book, the spark your learning starts with a word problem that says Julia runs through an obstacle course. She climbs a cargo net in one fourth of a minute. Then she crosses the balance beam in one sixth of a minute. How long does Julia take to complete both obstacles? Okay, so we have Julia right here in the net and the cargo net takes her one fourth of a minute and then the balance beam takes one sixth of a minute. Then the most important thing here says draw to show your reasoning. Remember the I can is can we use um, visual aids to help us? Okay, so I'm gonna be using this sheet again for our lesson. And this one whole piece is gonna represent our one minute, okay? So um, the cargo net took one fourth of a minute. All right, so that would be a fourth of a minute. And then the balance beam took one sixth of a minute. So between the two, she has a lot of time left over, right? So these are just small parts of one minute, okay? So this is one way to draw our answer. But we want to be able to show equal pieces, right? We're, we're working with common denominators here. So if we have one denominator as a four and one denominator as a six, what would our common denominator be? And again, just as a reminder, what number can I multiply four by? And what can I multiply six by to be, to be equal to the same number? All right, so can I leave, I'm gonna always start with the biggest number, six. Six times one is six. Can I multiply anything by that four to be six? No, I can't. Okay, so what about six times two? Six times two is 12. Is there anything that I can multiply the four by to be 12? Yes, that's gonna be three, right? So I can both, I can multiply both numbers by something, anything, to be equal to that same number 12. And 12 is gonna be our common denominator. Okay, so thankfully I do have little 12 pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, what I'm gonna be doing kind of off screen is lining up these little 12 pieces until I have um, a mark at the end of the six. Okay, so if you want to along with me, go ahead and try drawing that on your paper. I'll be doing that in just a second. Okay, so for right now, I'm just gonna show you the first piece. So my one fourth, See if I can do this steady. My one fourth is the same as three of those twelves. See how they line up perfectly here? All right, so I'm gonna keep going with my twelves and let's see if I can do it so you can see what I'm doing here. There you go, they're exactly the same. So my one fourth is equal to three of them and my one sixth is equal to two of them. So my one fourth and my one sixth is the same as five of those twelfths. So one fourth plus one sixth the same as five twelfths. And that's proven by this visual model. So let's go ahead and draw that so you can have an example of what's supposed to be on your paper. So again, I'm always gonna start with my one hole up top. And you know what, I'm actually gonna redo that and make that a little bit bigger for you guys. There you go, let's make it nice and long, one hole. Okay, I did a fourth. So if that were about mm, here, and I'm just kind of estimating to give myself an idea. So if that was one fourth, let's say this was about one sixth. And then I was able to break my twelfths into three here. So if that was a twelfth, that was a twelfth, that was a twelfth, and then this was in half. So that would be a twelfth and that would be a twelfth. 
a lot harder to show it in drawing than with these, right? Which is why I broke these out because it is so much harder to show with a drawing because it's not precise. These are precise, which is why I love them so much. All right, so how long does it take Julia to complete both obstacles? And as we found out, it takes her five twelfths of a minute. All right, so moving on to the next page, page 134, we're gonna start with the build your understanding number one, and I'm gonna go over it and then let you try to complete this whole page by yourself. So number one says some obstacle courses included a rope climb. On his first try, Travis climbs two thirds of the length of the rope. On his second try, he climbs more than his first try by one sixth of the length of the rope. What part of the rope does Travis climb on his second try? All right, so complete the fractional model to show the problem, draw to show your thinking. Awesome, it already gives us exactly what we're working with. It shows you the one hole. It shows you the two thirds, right? That orange of the two, the one third and the one third is the two thirds of his first try, right? First try, two thirds that's shown here. And then his second try, he gets more than that by one sixth. So that's showing here. So we need to figure out using this box, this is going to be his second try. Okay. And again, we're looking for that common denominator. A says one student used all one sixth pieces and another student used all one twelfth pieces. Who was correct? And how do you know? B, could you use only one third pieces? C, write an equation. So this is where we're using our formula, right? Write them as numbers. And then what part of the rope does Travis climb on his second try? We want to know it with a common denominator. All right, go ahead and try this entire page on your own and then come back so we can go over it together. All right, great work. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and try to go over this problem together. All right, so here is my one hole, right? Start with a blank. The problem that it gives us is a one third and a one third. And my pieces are actually black one thirds, not orange. So this is how far he got on his first try, right? But on his second try, he got one sixth more. So this was his first try. This was the, it fell, oh no, with its second try. There we go. So the black was the first try, the black plus the orange is the second try. All right, so we wanna figure out what this is with equal pieces using our common denominator. And again, those common denominators are a three and a six. What can I multiply three by and what can I multiply six by to be equal to the same number? All right, always start with your largest number. My largest number in this case is six. Do I have to multiply anything to be the largest number, six times one is six. Can I multiply anything by three to be six? Yes, two. So my common denominator between three and six is six, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use all six pieces. So I'm gonna cover up my one third by sixth pieces. And because I multiplied three by two, guess how many sixth pieces are equal to one third? That's right, two. And again, the other one third is going to be another sixth pieces. And so one third and one third together are going to be four sixths. And then just covering up the one sixth obviously is another one sixth. So if I did a one third, a one third, and then I got another sixth, how many pieces all together equally? Is this equal to one, two, three, four, five, six? So if I were going to draw this, and I knew that my one third split in half was a sixth, and there's the end of it. My one third was split in half, and there's the end of it, and then that was my sixth. So now in sixth pieces, I have one, two, three, four, five. So I have five 
of the sixth pieces. Okay. So for A, it says one student used all one sixth strax- fraction strips to find the part of the rope Travis climbed on his second try. And another student used all one twelfth sh- fraction strips. Who is correct and how do you know? Well, we know the one sixth works, right? Because that's what we did ourselves. But if you were one of the students who went through and you did a six and a three and you said 12 because you know that six times two is 12 and three times four is 12, that is correct. You are not incorrect. You are fine if you got 12 on the bottom. But at the very end, you're just going to have to reduce your fraction to the lowest terms. And that is okay. If you got 12, great job. And I'm going to show you just how correct you are. All right. So my one sixth is the same as two of my 12 pieces, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all my 12 pieces. So another of the sixth is 12, two 12s. Another sixth is two 12s. Another sixth is two 12s. I know you can't see what I'm doing yet, but you'll see in just a second. So if I did two 12s for all of my sixth and I had five six, how many 12s do you think they're going to be if there's two for each? If you were thinking 10 and you got 10 12ths as your answer, great job. You did phenomenal. So there are 10 pink pieces. There are 10 12th pieces because for each of my sixth, right? Six to 12 is times two, which means there's going to be two pieces for each sixth. So if I have five of my orange and I cut these all in half, that means there has to be 10 of my pink which there are. So 10 twelfths. So which student was correct? They are both correct. I love when that happens. When two students' brains work in different ways and they get to the same answer, I love that stuff. All right, so both of you smart kiddos are correct. All right, so for B, could you use only one third to represent the sum? This is interesting here. So I have a third and I have a sixth, right? Could I use all one thirds? Well, I used a one third, a one third, and guess what happens when I cover up my one sixth? It actually equals one whole, right? This piece is just too big, right? In order to get my sixth, because my sixth is smaller, I need a fraction piece that is smaller to work with. My one third is just too big. So that one's not gonna work. So this answer is gonna be no, because the one sixth is smaller. So write an equation to model your solution. So here is for the students that aren't really a fan of this visual learning. That's okay. If your student is having trouble with this, if you are one of my students and you're having trouble with this, that's okay. I'm wanting to push your boundaries and get you to try this a different way. But here, if your brain works with just numbers on a paper, here is your time to shine. So if you were doing the equation and you had two thirds plus your one sixth, what would that be equal to? Right, I'm gonna multiply my two thirds by two, so that would be four sixths plus my one sixth, and that would be equal to five sixths. Yes, that took less time, and if your brain works that way, great. But some students need it with the visual learning to really grasp that. So no matter how your brain works, as long as we're getting to the same answer, we are on fire. All right, last question D. What part of the rope does Travis climb on his second try? And we found this answer multiple different ways. We know that he climbed five sixths of the rope. All right, great job, everyone. I know these fractions can be really hard, but good job sticking with it and good job working hard. All right, go ahead and use this information to help you with the rest of the lesson because I will see you back for the next one on module six, lesson three.